can forget those times that you thought it was misused, and let's try to use it for good tonight. Verse 17, chapter 13 of the book of Exodus. Verses 17 and 18. And came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, let's preadventure the uh, people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And they took the bones of Joseph with him. You may be seated. Thank you. I would... I don't believe I would be unkind if I would ask you if you're going to take any more pictures, take them right now. After I get to preaching, I'd rather not have any pictures taken. Uh, I think it distracts us a little bit, and I need all the help I can get. I preached the message. Uh, my brother Spells Church, a pre-conference service in Baton Rouge when we first became a fellowship. I preached a message on uh, name the baby. And then I preached one later in Little Rock for the home of the church on don't drop the baby. And I don't know if I need to preach tonight, spank it, choke it, <laughs> fan it, or what to do to it. But I hope to God I can feed it and give it a little education or something to see what happens after that. There have been times that I've wondered in my own mind if I got those messages from the Lord. <laughs> feel like I did, but uh, I do know that if we're not careful, we can fit sermons to the occasion. I'd hate to know that that's what I was doing. Just as simple as this, and I might say this in advance before I start, and I know we're running just a little late, not too bad, and I'm so slow, I always have been slow to get started and slow to stop. But may I say this, I have not uh, talked to Brother Free. Well, this is no conspiracy. Where is Brother Free? Uh, if anything sounds like anything he said today, it was not prearranged. In fact, I told Brother Free today, before he preached, before I knew what he was going to what the Lord was dealing with me about tonight. So please don't think that it was a conspiracy or a put together on this. I don't get to see Brother, Brother Free very much. He's so busy and won't ever come see me. So I haven't talked to him. But I do feel like the Holy Ghost is trying to say something to us. And... Uh, I heard Brother O'Brien say one time, and he was supposed to preach here tonight, as this is second fiddle, but somebody said, well, that's all right, just so you, Brother Bean gets the fiddle, but that's not how I feel. But anyhow, I wish he'd have been here. But I heard him say one time that every preacher ought to be allowed to swing reckless once in a while. You get anointed and see a point that needs real stress, and if we're not careful, we uh, emphasize it so much that we swing a little wild, and I think we can all allow that, can't we? I'm going to try not to do that, but if I do, you just allow that I'm trying to be helpful. He said he did not send them through that little near, nearer path 
could have been much nearer, much simpler. But he said, I knew what was best for them. I knew if they went the nearer path, it'd be easier to go home. So I sent them circling around through the wilderness and the Red Sea area and carried them the long way around to where it would be much, much safer to keep them all going in one direction. And uh, that's a good point. I like that. It explains why we have trouble sometimes. It doesn't make sense unless we understand the will of God. I heard a missionary talking one time and said they put up a tent in a foreign field, never preached there before, and hadn't got the tent up till a storm came toward all the people. Well, how in the why would that happen? How come you had so much trouble beginning with your churches? And how come you're still fighting? Well, God hasn't got no nearer path for any of us to go. He's chosen a path in this wilderness and it's a long way around sometime, but we're going to get there. Hallelujah. And shortcuts can be dangerous sometimes. Did you hear me? Shortcuts can be dangerous. If we try to make shortcuts in our message or our praying people through or in getting our numbers, uh, it's that much nearer for them to go back out that door. So uh, I'm not looking for a shortcut in this uh, route tonight. I still see, uh, oh, I'm not, I'm not saying that I don't believe God could pour the Holy Ghost out, and I believe He will, without all of this altar work, but if it takes all to work to get one through, and you have to stay with him a while, and we'll just stay with him a while. And after he's talked in tongues a while, then we're going to shout him some more, and he's sure he got it. And uh, I just don't see any shortcut. No, he could have taken much nearer path. There's a lot of ways that people are looking at today the nearer path to revivals and to a greater success. May I say this, and I'm rambling a little now, but I'll get where I want to go in a minute. May I say this, you will see in a short time apologies made and acceptance of television advertisement any of this stuff that seems to be so bad right now, just give us a few more days, I say, us, people who uh, believe this message, and they will be apologizing to those they persecute. Because um, just uh, the other day a man was in my home and telling about, in your area, here, Someone was on TV, and that Sunday night, after the advertisement, 100 adult sinners was in that audience to hear him preach. That's fairly convincing. That almost makes me want to get a television program. But on the other hand, I looked in the book and found that he did not have any near uh, I don't want any shortcuts because I want to make the city, and I want you to make it, and all of those I preach to. Let's just go ahead and take the route he's chosen, because he knows where we're at, our weaknesses, he knows the possibilities of our looking over our shoulder. And the nearer we are to that world out there in our outreach, the easier it will be for us to go to that world or our people to go. I'm just going to take that old long journey. I say they could have cut it, they could have cut it shorter by obedience. I don't think it had to take as long as it did. A lot of that was pure stubborn human rebellion. I think a lot of our programs, I think a lot of Pentecostal uh, traditions are we're there because of. Uh, to name just a few, I I never did know anything how to cast the devil out but to have four men grab them and hold them down. 
You know, that's all I've ever seen, so that's all I have faith for. So grab him, tackle him, throw him down, hold his legs and his arms, and hope he don't bite you, and then we'll get him out. I think we, I think we just got him tired. And he finally gave up. <laughs> That's an old Pentecostal tradition that goes too far through the wilderness. Some of this stuff we could cut short on, but let's don't cut short where it's too dangerous. What do you say? Everybody listening. Are you willing to, for me to talk to you just a little? Praise the Lord. I wore my body out praying with chronic seekers. When his faith could have been built, they could have got the Holy Ghost, and then I'd still be in good shape. Our churches was taught the miraculous move of God like it ought to. It would be a shortcut, but it wouldn't be dangerous. You heard Brother Lambeth say that immediately they received the Holy Ghost. Immediately, 15 got him. That, uh, don't. I was preaching this place one time, and we uh, prayed some folks through, and an old man came staggering up on the platform, and, and he was uh, eating me out good. He said, well, I don't believe in that. Why, well, he said, uh, uh, after they're baptized, I think they ought to seek the Holy Ghost at least four or five nights. That's just rushing them too fast. I'll repent about four or five nights. Well, that's a hang-up Pentecost has had for years that hindered us reaping a lot of people. And in that area, there's a shortcut. And the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. Praise the Lord. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to wall in the altar all of your life and have a bunch of things spit on you. You can have the Holy Ghost right where you're at now. And it won't do any damage or injury to the real, genuine experience. Repentance doesn't have to be in any set form. You can repent coming down the aisle. Standing up, you can repent. But, um, well, glory to God. I just want us to get the work done. But let's don't cut too short through here. Amen. Let's stay with uh, the safety zone that God knows about. He knows we can't be trusted to, if we can look over our shoulder and still see the, the brick mill back in Egypt and some cucumbers back. Glory to God. Let's, uh, I heard of people, a uh, preacher told me not so awfully long ago that a visiting preacher came to his place and showed him all the area he had to reach and he said, well, the only way you can reach it is get on television. Well, we've got a lot of things that we could cut short on. But I'm going to go the right way. And then when they, they chose the right way and decided to do it, it took a little bit longer if it took just a little bit. See, I'm not having the end time to die, but I believe I will. And uh, I'm not discouraged because I hadn't just took the country. It's, I've got some close friends that are having uh, 1,500, 2,000. I understand some going as high as 3,500. I'm on my way, a little slower. I'm cleaning them as I go. <laughs> <laughs> But I feel a lot safer about this. I had a saint move to a city and uh, called just the day before yesterday and attended one of those shortcut places. And this dear sister was so shocked she couldn't hardly stand it. She said, Brother Bean, and his name is a name of fairly good renown in our country, she said, I cannot get over it. She said, there is not a woman in the church that doesn't wear slacks in your body. And uh, that's a short cut. If you're going to get your number that way, oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm not appealed at all. Now, if you've got a way that you can pray them through and help them get through, Joe Duke had his method. They laughed at him for saying Tita, Tita, but there's some in your church that said Tita and got the Holy Ghost. And I don't understand it all, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, 
Everything I ever got, I worked my hands to the bone to get it. Uh, I told my wife here a while back, pray a few people through and lose some. It looks like the devil sees to it that you're not going to enjoy it much. Just think you're going to lick your lips and sit down and enjoy something and he'll pull one on you. Well, just for a make up, he don't like this. On the other hand, there's some that never have a problem. I know what I'm talking about. They're just doing fine. They can't have church for praying and food. And I preach more on staying in. Please stay around till we get something done. Well, that's imperfect, and I don't like that. But I refuse to take the shortcut. You hear me tonight, I'm going to still preach what they have to do after they get in the church. It's safer that way. You bring them in on the realm of the world, and you'll forever have to fight them. Now, I personally believe you can laugh or whatever you want to do with this. I believe we are in the shadows of the tribulation. I believe we're so close to it till honestly I smell it. We are so near the problems that the tribulation will bring. Till our saints are calling, what in the world is this I feel? Why am I fighting the way I fight? Why at night can't I find the Lord? Why is my prayer life harder than it's ever been? We're in the shadows of the tribulation. What have I got to offer them? I can't offer you anything but a rap that goes through a wilderness. Because I know and God knows that if we cut it short, you're not going to make it. Well, I could preach on that and never get to the other, but I'm going to mix them both. The same bunch that to come to the program of going the route, the long way, the hard route. The book said that they had something going for them. And it would be very nice if we learned it. Since I'm going to have to do it the hard way and uh, the long way and no shortcuts, I better learn how better to do it. All right. I've cried today. I'm. I don't consider myself a sissy. I've got a list of scriptures that'll fill up a whole typewritten page. Scriptures that simply said that men in the Bible well. If you're too big to cry, there's something wrong with you. When Brother Free was finishing his message today, and my heart was overwhelmed, Brother Free, I, I, it takes me a while to, and he goes through things for me. I mean, it takes me a while, I take what he says home, and I really do, and I do. But as that man was closing today, and I, I looked at him, and I looked up on the platform, and there was that good brother Bill Gates. I don't know if a sweeter man in this world than Bill Gates. <laughs> He's been that way ever since he prayed to. And I just had to stand there and cry. Look where I'm at tonight. Oh, God. My friends, look what they believe. Look at their countenance. Oh, this is, this is great. <laughs> and then sometimes I could shake the whole bunch of them. <laughs> and don't believe half of what you're doing. I didn't say you meant it. I just get uh, weary. You wonder what's that all about? 
Are you on? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm making a mess. You're so hard to hit. And it's been. You're right, isn't it? And then on the other hand, you can be the little. The least of you. Some of you, you are so thin-skinned, so you wouldn't even compliment a good red tomato skin. <laughs> <laughs> the first little thing said about you, you're ready to take your marbles and go home and abandon the ship. Hello. We've got some of the biggest titty babies I've ever seen in my life. I tell you what, if we could get this bunch harnessed. I mean, if we, we've got the message settled and the route to go, but I tell you what, we haven't settled, and that's how to go. <laughs> Have you ever seen the old mare saddled up or hornet stuff that just had the cold not too long ago? And you, you might as well let the silly thing go with you or he'll tear the corral down. He can't get away from Mama that long. Turn him loose and he'll run beside his Mama and kick his heels up and have the time and take off running and circle around her and tear all the corn down while you're trying to get work out of her. That's what some of you remind me of. <laughs> You're having more fun tearing down the corn patch while we're trying to pull than I ever seen. You little old wild ass that can't stand the driver's voice and you don't want no harness that scares you nearly speechless. Go ahead. Hallelujah to God. This is not my style, but I'm feeling all right right now. There is a recording in the Bible about two kind of mules, and one of them's wild, and one of them's tame. One knows his master's crib, and the other one you couldn't get him around the crib. Right. You start chucking corn and hit to him. That's that's that. Oh Lord, that's scaring the dead. The rattling of the shucks would run him crazy. You couldn't feed him. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. If I see a need tonight in the Holy Ghost above another, it would be that we would learn what God's plan for our work together. Every man that I know, I haven't talked to all of you, but I've talked to a number, and every man that I know at one time or another, has felt the impulse to withdraw to himself and do his own little work. I don't know how many times I've had to fight myself to go where you were, and you are the ones I love the most. Yes, sir. Brethren, I'm being honest with you, and I'm trying to be helpful. It's my confession or anything but helpful. Forgive me for the confession. The spirit to pull back and get busy with our own project. I want to share an experience. It may not mean a thing to you, but I've got to live with it and do something about it. Here, not long ago, my baby took very sick, and I was three and four o'clock in the morning trying to find God. Nothing moved me like my children, and I believe all of you feel the same. I can be sick and take it, 
and uh, not ask for prayer even for a long time. But when my babies were sick, I'd nearly go wild trying to find the Lord. And the first impulse is to blame yourself. What have you done? But I was praying. I couldn't touch God, no healing. And that's the advantage of trusting the Lord for yourself and your children is it will cause you to search your heart. When you know that's the only source of healing, you'll, you'll fix it. You'll apologize to anybody you need to apologize to. If you've suffered in the flesh, you'll cease from sin. And uh, I was searching, and I said, God, tell me what's wrong. Well, I've been busy building a home and doing a lot of earthly things that grieve my spirit. I just am not a businessman at all. It's crossed up in my life. I don't like it. But the happiest moments of my life, I remember at the old Elder C.W. Hughes' house one time. And I was on the thing. I didn't realize just what it all meant. But I was laying up there in his bedroom listening to a record and cried half the day and enjoyed it. Oh, I was enjoying the presence of the Lord. But if you came in, he said, oh, I wish I could do that. I didn't understand what he meant till I started passing, Brother Stephen. <laughs> oh, I'd like to go back and have a day where I could just feast. And when I think I'm fixing the feast, somebody calls and says, do you think this is a good price to pay for a car? <laughs> and I'm going to buy a home, and I'd like for you to come pray over it. It's something. But I was pleading with the Lord and show me, God, what have I done wrong? I want my baby healed and I don't want my sins to cause him not to be healed. And I expected the Lord really did. I expected him to speak real sharply to me and say, You haven't prayed like y'all do, you've been too busy with the affairs of this life. And read your Bible as much as you should. I really expected that because I was guilty. You know what happened? The most strange experience, and I can't forget it, and you can laugh at all, but it means something to me tonight. He, uh, I never thought of it, which I don't guess I ever used it in my life. But he spoke to me through his word, and to community, forget not. I said, God, you've got me. I'm sorry. I'm hemmed up. Every bit of it's right. I'm, I'm guilty to the 100th degree. In my independence and in my withdrawal and in my preoccupation with myself, I haven't even took the time to call a friend and see if he's still my friend. I haven't visited anybody. I haven't gone. I wouldn't hardly go to fellowship meetings or drudgery. Almost conferences. I beg you to only have one a year. I don't like to go twice a year. I never had to leave Houston again. I'd be the happiest man in the country. But folks, it won't work that way. If we are to do the work of God, I need you real bad. And believe it or not, you need me. And if we're going to choose the long road from here to Canaan's land and the move of God and the success that needs to be, and we're taking the bones of our prophets with us, and they said they wanted to go, dead or alive, and the memories of apostolic preachers are lingering in the background and on the wagons that we're pulling tonight, if we're going, we better learn to know how to harness ourselves to one another and to the work that is set before us. I did not say that you can bother my church or I can bother yours except by influence of a ministry. I didn't say we couldn't still have a sovereign church, but brother, look, brother Byrne knocked the way out of all of us with the bramble bush. He charred my sinuses and they're still running. And it scared us all nearly to death of the word organization. For the bird did a marvelous job, but on the other hand, he didn't intend for us to become so scattered and so individual 
that the work of God would be hindered and the home mission program is not even in our manual. And the foreign mission policy is so, has been so warped until we are at a standstill in some areas. What is lacking? We need a collar on this mule. We need some crank chains and we need a bridle. Scares the life out of some of you. You're looking now like you said foreign wouldn't do after you got there. Afraid I'm fixing to start another UP. Somebody said to me today, and it was one of my dearest friends, and if he's here tonight, he's still my friend. He said, it sounds to me like you're just about to get the same old girl with just another dress. I said, well, at least she needed another dress. I saw that one too long. Yes, sir. I am not advocating, I am not advocating a system that would destroy us. I'm simply saying they went out harnessed. I'm simply saying that there is a way that local sovereign churches with godly pastors can get together and have a system that will work in spreading this gospel to the world. What I cried so much about is I knew the truth the man said today, that New York will never be reached until something is done. Chicago will never know the gospel until something is done. Let me tell you what God gave me to go along with this message to ease your fears. There is distinctly a difference between a collar, a trace chain, and what's it called, hanging? There's a difference in that and a muzzle. Now, this is all in the world. This bunch needs tonight is to know the difference. The muzzle is what we're afraid of. The muzzle is what we don't want. The muzzle is what's going to kill us. Muzzling the ministry would destroy us just like it has ever other groups. I'm talking about muzzling them financially or muzzling them with a message. But brother, I'm not talking about putting muzzles on you when I'm asking you to join my hand and help me help Brother Lambert and help me help Brother uh, Hansi in the Philippines with a systematic program. I've done no damage. Bam, no. put your head in a muzzle, God Haman. If we had a whole missionary program, I didn't put no muscle on you. I put a harness on you. No more chances, he said. No, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to help him. And you know what's the problem? Some of these little wild ones that don't... I read an article the other day in a horseman's magazine. Is that all right to read a horseman's magazine? <laughs> don't you like it, Brother Chief? My Lord, I hope y'all don't go to preaching against this thing. One of the best trainers of the horses in the United States is in the panhandle area and he wrote an article here sometime that shocked me I thought if you bought a horse eight nine years old and if you went to ten and eleven you done messed up that man said that the best horses I've ever trained from this ranch was fifteen to eighteen years old when I got it When they left here, they was cutting. They was they was roping horses. I mean, friend, they wouldn't let a calf get by them. And most horsemen would have said that they're done past the age, they're done set, 
and cannot be trained. And this was his statement. Give me a horse past ten. Anything up to there has got too much mischief in it. Don't be alarmed at some of these little colts around here that's always braying and kicking. They're looking for fun. That's why they came to the conference, to get fun. Don't even expect to put harness on them. Let them go up for about 18 and we'll train them to cut. In the meantime, they're going to fuss, skim, kick, and carry on. They're immature. You know, the strangest thing about all of this is the one that drops the most about our little system turns right around. You know why they grab about it? They grab because we're not doing that much and grab because we don't have much of a system and then they turn right around and say, you're getting back to UPC. Yes, now what do you want? <laughs> do you want a system or don't you want one? You just want to drag and get your heels up. That's right. All right. All right. But there's a few old 18 year olds <laughs> that look like was about gone that's learning to cut. And now then they're throwing ropes off of some of them and they, they just stop so nice and keep that rope tight. Uh huh. Oh, hallelujah. They went out of harness. Brother Bill Garrett, I trust you to the high of heaven. I don't believe you'd hurt me or my church, but I don't want you to hurt my church. I don't want you to take the position that's been placed on you to do anything to my church. But I would like for you to help guide me and my brothers into a program that there could be something done with the waste cities of our country. Oh, my God, when it hits me sometimes, I nearly die. And there's not a word, unless you've got a newer manual than mine, there's not a word in that manual about home mission. Not a word. You've added it, you added it when I wasn't there. What? I'm not fussing, I'm not griping. I'm trying to help us see ourselves tonight on the right path, willing to bypass all shortcuts, even though it may look like we're not doing much. Somebody asked me how the church is doing. I've been asked that several times. They heard me preach on revivals, and I guess they expect me to quickly say, well, we prayed 5,000 through last month, and we'll pick up a few more thousand this month. I'm sure they must be expecting that. Uh, my answer today was, we're moving like a herd of turtles. <laughs> it's pitiful. It's shameful. I almost feel jealous of some of these men that built two churches, and I hadn't even got to start with the first one. And we've been needing to build in three or four years. I'm just slow. I'm sorry. It's just that way. <laughs> Amen. A little slower. We've got the route picked out. And, uh, looks good to me. And it's farther enough away from Egypt that it's not as enticing as that other route. But what we seem to need just a little more of is an agreement on what could be done together. If we could somehow erase the fears that if we do add a little to the policy to strengthen our position and to help us to do more for God. Uh, did that do any damage? I didn't see where it did. If we ever see it going to, can't we stop? If we ever see that it's infringing on our rights, can't we stop? 
Isn't there a way that we could join hands tonight and not fear at all and not be suspicious of one another? If we're cursed with anything, it is an unheard of supply of suspicion. Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead, Elder. great men with the message that could be trusted anywhere. What a thrill to look at Brother Lambert's pictures and see holiness even in a foreign field. Man, that makes me, I wish to God, I, Brother Lambert, if I get it, I'm going to send you $5,000 every month. I can't understand it. Could you use that money? No, I'm not beside myself. I just see the work, where it's going, where it's working. Why can't we get push it just a little harder? I'll tell you why we haven't been able to do it. Somebody picks up their marbles and runs home. Somebody says, well, I, and it look, looks to me like they're, ha, 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 they're getting back you, PC. Somebody says, ah, oh, look at that. They're gonna, it'll be right back where it used to be. I see right now. Mm -hmm, yes. Here it goes, yeah. mm -hmm. Same old girl with a different dress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by the time that spread around, everybody's scared to do anything. And I don't know how many men I've talked to that's not spending a dime on foreign missions because they're waiting on us to put the harness on. I tell you, I'm embarrassed to stand before my people and ask them for money and know there's some little old little woman that. All the way they have of making a living is working in houses, cleaning houses, and getting a little money and hear them pledge 50 to to $100, and then get up and have to tell them all the money you gave to the Philippines is gone, or all the money you gave to this field is gone. We lost it from the lack of hornets. I don't think it's fair to our saints to make us sense to take their money and misuse it carelessly. What did the book mean when it said not be slothful in business? There's not a one of you more. I don't, if, if ever I have, no, let me see. I never thought of Re-entering my name on another entry. Never. From the day I was delivered unto myself. And I'm sorry that I have to even bring this subject up. We ought to be matured past this subject. Sure. We, really, we ought to be. I think we ought to be. But we're not. And I don't plan ever as long as I live. Don't really plan this. I don't say I wouldn't. Maybe God's got a situation I don't know about. But I don't believe he has. And I am not interested in any one of you men giving up any rights to a free full minute. But oh, how I'd love to see the hornets put on some of the races. How I'd love to see what this team could do. If they would learn the difference between a muzzle and a hornet. That's the whole problem tonight. I mean, we're afraid of muzzles because we've seen board members muzzling pastors. And we've seen all kind of boards muzzling pastors. And we've seen all of that. And, and when you throw a muzzle in front of this box, you... Oh, whip. They ain't turned into anything but nice. <laughs> and I don't blame them. It's against the book to muzzle the ox that spreads out the corn. But it's not against the book to put a yoke on it. Amen.
And some are so afraid to get yoked down because little Jenny's running along, kicking his heels up, making fun. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like what I'm doing. Enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Make fun all you want to. But it's for me and my house, as long as the direction keeps up like it's going. Yes, sir. I mean, towards a system that we can handle and work with and do the work of God. And when I went to Houston, let me tell you what God gave me from His Word. I had to have something. I didn't want to give up the evangelistic field, and God assigned me that job, and I didn't want to go. But uh, He kept sent me that. And, but He gave me this word of encouragement. The book of Isaiah, God spoke and he said, and I feel if ever God used a scripture setting to talk to me, I believe that was it. But I believe it will help all of us to understand it. He said, you will no longer plant things and not be able to do it. I preached in churches to have men come behind me and with one swipe take away everything I'd labored for. You will build houses and live out of yourself. And I want to say to the AMF brethren, I feel like that if we'll have enough system to be able to safeguard our program, to keep others' hands off of us, that's not too much law. If we're going to spend several hundred thousand dollars in a foreign field, let's protect that several hundred thousand dollars. And be sure that somebody else don't come along with a weaker message and live in those houses and eat those vineyards. It's worth putting a little system to it. This could be so easily misunderstood tonight, and I know it. I have a little change of heart. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and I'm not trying to take advantage of you tonight. I just get so burdened sometimes. I made a mistake the other day. I told those fellas. I was kind of just a little disgusted. I said, I'm going to keep sending my 700 a month, but I, if I've got any more, I'm seriously considering, unless there is a little tighter, I'm tired of wasting money. And I'm not trying to bring all this back up to remind anybody of anything, but there, there may be folks leave here thinking we're really headed down the wrong road. I tell you, the road I'm going is that long wilderness route to Canaan. I'm staying as far away from Egypt, and I don't want my people even see Egypt from where we're walking. No. I mean, I won't keep their back. <laughs> we're on our way right now. Yes. But I'd like to be able to harness up with somebody and be able to do a greater work. I'd like to see the cities of America evangelized so badly. And God knows the un unevangelized barn fields, and this nearly kills me, but now you face it. You face it with me. If what we preach is necessary for salvation, holiness, all the works that go with it, we have got to start all over again in America. Now, when that gets through waiting down on you and nearly killing you, it'll make you want to come out of here and put something in here about home missions. Instead of standing off over here pointing our finger at the bunch that's led down the message, we better get our mind off of that and say, hey. I had one of the top-notch officials call me and say, Brother Dean, I'm so glad you brethren have got a good fellowship. I mean, he is out of his voice. And he said, the reason is we've got men in towns that are compromisers that's got our name on their church door and we can't move nobody in there. But you good brethren can go in with a strong message and deliver that city from compromise. Thank God for that man's vision for the law. It don't make any difference what signs up there. What message are they preaching? 
If they're preaching the right message, let them alone. But if they're not preaching the right message, let's move them and build the church. God can be done on the sweet spirit. No, you don't have to fight nobody. Just go in preaching what you know is the truth. And so help me, I'm going to say it again. If what I preach is necessary, we have so few churches in America, it scares me. That's right. Four stars on the map doesn't mean there's four churches in that city. The work is too great and too big, brethren, for us to be so little and so independent and so withdrawn. I stand confessing to you that I've fought the Spirit. I, it'd be dangerous, I guess, to ask, how many of you, brethren, have fought the Spirit to withdraw to yourself and just kind of pick your friends and, and pay attention to what you're doing and let the rest go? God only knows how many of you have been almost overwhelmed with that Spirit. I've had strong, great men, elders, to stand in front of me and say, I'm going home and forget the whole bunch. I understood what they meant because I've said it inside a hundred times. What is it? It's the darkness of this world. It's the powers of hell that knows the strong men here tonight could bring a message of deliverance to the lost. The devil knows we've got the saving message. If he can get you to withdraw it and stand back and, and giggle and laugh and, and, and do everything you can to keep the efforts of this brother moving forward, he'll use you. But by the grace of God, I'm thankful with everything in me that that spirit is not going to overwhelm me. I'm here tonight to join together with you. Where is my place here tonight? Where is my place of sacrifice? What do you want me to do to help get the work of God done better? I love you till it hurts. You are mine and will always be. And I don't want you to think that I mean by this that I feel I can make it on my own. When I think of withdrawing, I think in terms I still have friends and still will mingle with them on occasion. But friend, that's too selfish. Yeah. I've got to get together with you and rub shoulders with you and iron will sharpen and iron. And we need to get together and share ideas in the love of God. And, and if I'm wrong, I don't mind you telling me I'm wrong. <laughs> You haven't hurt my feelings. I've got a goal left under. I'm trying to do something for God. And I'm ready for help. I'm open for help. Bless your heart. Sometimes men can be the greatest preachers in the world. But the least little thing can bother them. And something has disqualified you from the ministry, sir. Has anybody ever read the qualifications of the ministry? I tell you, heaven got a hold of me, and brother, and I apologize. I've had men to say that brother Bean walked by me and didn't even speak, and he must not like me anymore, and all of that, brother. If I, I'm about half nuts, I think sometimes anyhow, I don't know how to act. That's for all of my life, and from the sticks of Louisiana, I would to God I knew how to act. I told my wife I'm under strain so much of the time because I don't know how to act around people. And I'm not trying to be pitiful here tonight. Just forgive me. I'm trying to improve. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to be your friend. I want you to love me, and I sort of love you. And then on top of all of that, there's a work to be done. That whether we love one another or not, I mean, I got two horses that work well together pulling a little cart. But they keep one another once in a while. <laughs> Even if you're going to kick, when we get in the harness, let's pull. All right. Kick in the corral, but let's go kick here. <laughs> oh, my God, the load is heavy. The souls of many. The work is increasing by the day. As we see the depreciation and the falling away, believe it or not, we're having a mass falling away. 
The plow of the tares are going. Let's do something about the wheat. The book said the wheat and the tares both grew together until the time of the harvest. Surely something can be done that real, genuine wheat can grow at this hour. It's past my time, and I'm sorry that I've gone over my time. It's not half started. I wanted to say more. Brother, we need to be knit together with love. We need some something to bind us closer. Little sharp remarks to one another is not really good. The book is against it. Have you ever read your book? It's got more than Acts 238, and it's got more than PayPal. It says, be kindly affectionate one to another. This ensue and pursue peace. It's worth running after. If you didn't get it today, get up in the morning on the run after it. If your brother feels a little indifferent, stay after him until he loves you nearly to death. Why? Because the loss depends on what we're doing around here. You find it so easy to keep people in line with barbed remarks and sharp criticism. I told somebody one time, I think it was a young preacher, I said, please don't, ex two things don't expect out of this bunch. One is a compliment and the other one's an answered letter. They'll never give it to you. I said, don't expect a compliment or an answered letter. <laughs> That's us. That's us. Help us, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and when somebody does express a compliment, what psychology class did he go to? Suspicious. Yeah. Yes, Don't sir. believe him in it. Yes, sir. You're helping us out. Are you receiving it, brother, or am I just making the biggest mess I've ever made in my life? I'm trying. The burden is so great tonight. I, I could just, I laid at night and cried and begged God to help us. I don't want to paint the picture that we're just, we're not doing anything, but brethren, the work to be done. It'd be like a housewife washing three dishes and two spoons and sit out and say, my, 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 look what I did today and the rest of the house in a mess. I don't want us to wash three dishes and say, we got it made. We've got a long ways to go. While we're sitting here tonight, the message is being depreciated in towns over America. And somebody's going to have to go in that town and fill the gap. And then on top of that, the foreign work is so great till it's almost unbelievable. What can we do about it? I'll tell you what we can do about it. Let's heal some wounds. Let's reach out for some friends. If preachers come to our conference, let's don't make them feel like orphans from somebody else's school that don't belong to our fellowship. I say tonight, welcome them. Brother Majors, I've picked at him all day about, but welcome the man here if he don't belong to us. Then the likelihood he wouldn't be here. That's right. Have you ever heard of an official welcome for men that didn't belong to a certain group? Glad to have you and even welcome their opinion. Yes, sir. I see one hand waving. Thank you, Brother Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead just about five more minutes. <laughs> and, and whatever y'all do with this after this, I just, I'm sorry. I love you anyway. I can't figure this out. The blundering work that we have come down through here. <laughs> Man called me the other day. He's done at this conference. You know why he's out here? Oh, first of all, he's a kitty baby. <laughs> but second, he begged for a conference for three years and it was promised to him and unofficially changed. 
the blundering system that's afraid of harm has wounded a man that we may never see him again. We've seen so many things behind the scenes and one or two men run the show because nobody wanted a system and when we tried to offer a system, no, 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 scared of that. But on the other hand, criticized because, what, if, if anybody ever heard of Burley's spell, that man ought to be wearing a crown tonight. One handed, he's kept us together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know what I'm talking about. Keeping things, keeping brethren together and working behind the scenes and having to do things sometimes it was not his place to do. But he knew it had to be done quickly or, or something was going to Thank you, Brother Sarah. I like you. Yes, sir. Amen. And then blame him for, if it happens, anything he did that was really all blaming for it. But when the vacuum formed and somebody had to fill it, then what? When there was no system to take the place, then what? We're standing here criticizing everything, and yet we're not willing to change it. But right. here it's going to put a muzzle on it. I'm not mad with nobody. I'm trying to get something on your shoulder that shouldn't pull a load. I mean, get your head down. I mean, and dig your heels in the ground and pull. And you won't have so much time to hee haw and have a lot of complaints. <laughs> I was trying to train a little yoke of oxen one time, us boys. We used to have oxen in our country, logging country, and so we were training a couple. Well, that was fun. <laughs> one of them crazy things, they'd twist plumb around until he nearly broke his neck. And here's one, the north end going south is headed this way, and the other one headed back this way. Then you get them started, and one will go on one side of the pine tree and one on the other, and they go into the pine That's fun. <laughs> and then they don't want a system, and yet criticize because we haven't got a system they like that, because they can really be easy. Uh -huh. All right. Stick your thumb in your mouth and go home or get you a pacifier and learn to laugh about something else. This bunch has got a serious walk to do. The greatest man on earth sometimes has the thinnest skin. Hello? Thank you, brother. I overdid it. No, sir. If I sounded unkind, I didn't mean it. I also didn't mean to take a word of it back. <laughs> and all you that believe, I like to say amen. Yeah. Well, then it can be done and then done in a much greater manner than what we're doing. For those men that are standing on the sidelines and have money in their pockets wanting to invest but afraid that it'll go down a rabbit hole, let's convince them we can do business right. Don't, don't put muzzles on me. You sure to get off tonight. But harness me up to whatever I can do. And I'll do my best to pull the load. Praise God. And everybody said in Jesus. And I'm going to do my best to correct the mistake of my life and to communicate. Forget not. Turn to other men's feelings. Yes. In many times, Jesus said that the haters and betrayers of one another are epidemic stages, and friends are harder to hold to man than they've ever been. And you cannot take one for granted. He's your friend today, but the spirit of this age makes him suspicious that he will not be your friend tomorrow. What do I do about it? Bless God, don't make me a lick of difference what to think about me. Oh, how carnal can you be? Don't ever preach spirituality to your church. And then in the background, make such a silly statement. I am my 
And I have failed us in the midst of you. And in many areas of communication, I have failed. I'm going to be there. Because the work of God depends. The hour demands. The labor demands. In Jesus' name. Father of heaven and earth, I appeal to you. I love you with all of my I hope that your word and the way I present it would be received. To help us see ourselves and correct our directions and positions to do a greater work. Please help us tonight. Please help us. In Jesus' name. because it wasn't preached. I feel that in spite of Brother Dean's whimsical way of putting this, he said some things that that should stir us. He's, he was nice. He put them so beautifully. Made us laugh. But I've shed some tears during this message. Yes. I'd like you to stand with me and ask God together to help us. <laughs> Do you feel your need of God's help tonight? Let's ask God to give us direction. Church pray. Hallelujah. the words of the man of God. Reach our hearts tonight, Lord. message must have a dual help. It must be the man of God and the Spirit of God. And tonight the Spirit of God is here. The man of God is given the message. And I wonder if we have yielded ourselves to receive what God has given us tonight. Thank God for this wonderful message, this great man of God that we all love and respect. We'll ask our chairman, Brother Gary, to come and make our announcements for tomorrow this service. May God richly bless you. Don't forget, you will, after this service, be sure to see Brother Williams. Our secretary has authorized Brother Williams to receive your name and address and your pledge amounts. You will see Brother Williams at the close of this service and give that information to him. We would appreciate it so very much. God.